Lots of my audience are church production folks, but I know that a lot of other users use the X32 console. So if you're not in the church world, welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs. Have you ever done a church gathering or concert event in the round? If not, you should definitely try this. Start small at a retreat or a youth night. We did a setup like this and I had a thought, how convenient would it be to put this SD8 stage box in the center of the room? Then we can connect all of our in-ear monitors as well as our microphone and instrument inputs to the sound system over a single ethernet cable. Have you ever found yourself in this situation? You have a great plan, then end up running hundreds of feet of XLR cables to the front of house console, all because you couldn't get the routing set up correct to do everything over the single ethernet cable. Well, I am guilty of this, and now I've spent the past year or so learning AES50 routing to unlock new possibilities for myself. And now I'm taking you through a deep dive with the new version 4.09 operating system update. Hi everybody, my name is Nathan Robb from Crazy Amazing Designs. I'm a longtime user of the X32 series of products. I love production, but I'm not really an audio engineer. I understand the hardware super well, and I surround myself with audio professionals who are extremely good at their craft. So save this video in your bookmarks, send it to your friends so that you can reference back as often as necessary. These routing videos are just as much for my own reference as they are designed to be a resource to the churches that I seek to serve. To get started, let's look at the X32 series of consoles and what hardware options are available. Here I have an X32 Compact. This is a smaller version of the full-size X32 console. Behringer also makes the X32 Producer, which is a few hundred dollars cheaper than this Compact, but it doesn't have these channel strips on each channel so you know what's happening. Midas also has the M32, which looks a little different, but is basically a full-size X32 with Midas preamps. The X32 rack here is a rack mounted unit that has all the same IO as the compact, but it has no control surface with the faders. As we get into this, I'm going to assume that you have a rough understanding of how this console operates. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments or send me an email to crazyamazingnathan at gmail.com. On my website, crazyamazingdesigns.com, you can download my show file, which will give you my default routing and console layout. While you are there, grab the X32 routing master file, which is more than a cheat sheet, but a PDF that puts on paper all of the routing info we're learning in these videos to help you quickly get set up with the perfect routing on your console while helping you easily understand X32 routing. If you download my show file, then your console should be exactly laid out as mine. Always be sure to save your existing scene, especially if you are about to make changes to someone else's scene. Push the view button, tab over one page to scene, then pick a empty scene slot, hit save. It's gonna ask you to set a name and then you can just go ahead and hit save. And if you're overriding an existing scene, you have to select override. The ability to save a scene is so valuable as we learn. This allows us to make any changes without worrying about getting the console back the way we found it. Just recall the previously saved scene. So here I have a microphone <clears throat> and an XLR cable, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into input one on the back of this console. Now I'm going to go to the routing page. This is the routing button, and then the first page over, the first tab is inputs. This is where we're gonna assign all of our inputs for this console. How this page works is there's four sections that each contain eight channels of audio. So on the left, we have inputs one through eight, then nine through 16, 17, 24, and 25 to 32. Then the final column says aux inputs. And on the back of the console, there are eight quarter inch aux inputs on this console. So you probably guessed that inputs one through eight correlates with faders one through eight. The X32 Compact has these four buttons on the side here. So we've got one through eight, nine through 16, 17 to 24, 25 to 32. So it makes it slightly easier to remember the banks are directly correlated with the buttons and the fader banks. So under inputs one through eight in routing, I'm gonna select local one through eight as the source. And this is where we're gonna be pulling all of our audio from for the bank one through eight. Now, if I go to the one through eight page, this console has 16 local XLR inputs and eight quarter inch aux inputs. In a minute, we're gonna see signal on channel input one from the microphone we plugged in on local input one. However, because this is a digital console, we can't assume that because we plug a mic into input one that we're going to get signal in channel one. So let's make sure that channel one is set to receive audio from source input channel one. How we wanna do this is by pushing the select button on the channel we want to select. So in my case, I'll push the select button just above the channel one fader, and it'll light up as my confirmation, as well as on the screen in the top left, you'll see the little graphic that'll show up. 
Now I can tab over, if I click home, I can tab over one page to the config page. And here in the bottom left or in the left side, we're gonna see source. This is where we can select the input that gets routed to this channel. Let's make sure the source is set to input one since this is channel one. Then I'll go through the rest of them by pushing select, then confirm all 32 input channels sources are set one to one to their channel number. Back before firmware version 4.04.1 released in November of 2020, routing looked a lot different on the X32. The best option for routing a specific source to a specific channel was to change the input source on the channel level. Let's say we wanted an input to play music from our iPhone plugged into aux 1 and 2. Actually, I have a cable right here. Let's plug it into aux 1 and 2, aux 1, aux 2. We want to control it on channels five and six versus going over to the aux page and you can see my music playing. So we want to bring it up to inputs five and six, channels five and six. We would need to change the source on inputs five and six to be aux one and two instead of inputs five and six. So let's go to config, then go select the channel and now change this to aux one and go to the second one, go down to aux two. So now you can see my inputs audio is coming from the phone. Fortunately, now with new updates, we have the user inputs feature. And we're gonna dive into this shortly, but basically all of our routing can now be done in one place on the user input page. So remember on the routing page where we assigned our console input routing, I selected inputs one through eight to be local inputs one through eight. This means all eight inputs will be pulled from local inputs one through eight. Setting up an X32 console in blocks of eight like this is really the old method now of routing on the X32, but this still might be the easiest option for some simple setups. The downsides are with this is that it's very limiting due to routing changes becoming very complex in the future. The new method that is a lot more versatile and just as easy to understand with only a minute of instruction is to use this user inputs feature. So now back on the routing page in my input tab, I'm going to change every bank of inputs from local inputs or AES50 inputs to user inputs. So we're gonna change the first one to user inputs one through eight, then nine through 16, then 17 to 24, and finally user inputs 25 to 32. So now we've basically told the X32 to listen to the user assigned inputs for the input routing to this console. The 32 input channels of this console will now receive whatever source is selected on the user input page. So let's go ahead and arrow over to the right eight pages or eight tabs, and this is where we're gonna find this users section. On the first column on the left, we see our user inputs and outputs. Push the button on the first knob to change between the user inputs and outputs. Let's keep it on the inputs for now. Pushing the second knob over allows us to advance to the next input or rotate it to scroll through the 32 inputs. The dash here means that there is no input selected and we can confirm this because on the third tab over in the category and the in signal, they're both set to off. So we're gonna go ahead and change input one to local input and then input one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select in one and I'm gonna select the category as local in and then our in signal is going to be local in one. So now when I talk in my microphone, I should see signal as you can see right there. And now, yeah, perfect. We can see signal on our channel. Okay, so if you don't see audio from this mic in your input, here are some quick and basic troubleshooting thoughts for inputs. Confirm the channel source is set to input one, go to home, config source, and then select your input. I can see it's selected as input one. To confirm that input one through eight is set to user in one through eight on the input page, go to routing on the very first page on the input, user in one through eight, perfect. Number three, confirm channel one is not muted. That's always a fun one. Why am I not getting any audio? It's probably muted. <laughs> Number four are DCAs, and these can be used to create groups of channels, and they can also be group muted from here. So uh, my one through eight are running through this DCA number one, which is for the drum. So if I mute it, now nothing's gonna pass through these inputs. If I turn the fader all the way down, nothing's gonna pass through these inputs. And how you know these are selected is by holding down the select button. And now you can see that one through eight are added to this group. If I go to the next page, see nothing is selected there. 
If I select the guitars, you can see that these three guitars are in this group and nothing else is in this group. That's how you can see if stuff is in a DCA group. So if none of that's working, then make sure there are no errors in the boxes on the top right of the screen. The boxes could be red on, on the 44.1 or 48K boxes. If this is the case, go to the setup page and now on the left side where it says sample rate and clock source, be sure that your clock source is set to internal. Number six, also be sure the mic isn't muted. There could be a switch. User inputs are incredible because now from one place, we can select any of our 32 inputs and then select what source we're routing to each of these inputs. Sources can include any of the 16 local inputs as well as sources I discuss in detail in other videos. So check out the description for those links. But those sources include the AS50 inputs from both the A and B ports connecting stage boxes auxiliary inputs and card inputs with the default card. This is the 32 channel USB interface from a computer, but you could also have the Dante card and use all the features of Dante. We selected input one and routed local input one to be the source. This console has 16 local inputs though, so I could go through and select those inputs from my first 16 channels. Basically, this is the same as selecting inputs one through eight and nine through 16 as the first 16 inputs. But this will allow us way more flexibility in the future and all of the routing is now done in the single user input page. Great, now that our inputs are working, we need to get an output working so we can hear it in our sound system. So now let's route our first XLR output from this console. The XLR tab is where we select what is sent to the eight physical XLR out connectors on this console. If you route outputs on the XLR tab to non-local XLR ports on the back of this console, then this asterisk will appear one tab over in the out tab that says, hello, this output is currently not assigned to any local analog output connector. Please check the XLR tab. Basically, this means that you have outputs selected that are not going to the physical outputs. On the XLR tab, I'm going to select user out one through four and user out five through eight as my outputs. So in the bottom right corner of this window, we can see our, an overview of our output patches. This is handy to know what is happening right here on this page. Since the eight outputs are assigned to the user outputs, we would normally have to tab over to the users out to see what outputs are assigned to our outputs. The next tab over, we're gonna find the out tab. And this is where we can assign what mix bus outputs from the console get routed to each of the 16 XLR outputs available to this system. I have outputs one through six assigned to mix buses one through six, and then seven and eight are the default main left and right outputs. So here I have this XLR cable plugged into this audio recorder, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into connector output eight on the console and this is going to plug it into our main right output. Here we can hear the audio coming through. Hello, hello, is th there's no audio coming through. That's weird. We have a signal from our microphone. It's not muted. I can see it in my output when I turn up my fader. Oh, wait a minute. One last thing we need to do. We need to go over to the user tab all the way to the right. Now on the user tab, I'm going to push the first knob to switch to outputs. This is where we select what source gets set to each output. So I'll scroll down to number eight, then in the category column, I'll select output. Then in the fourth column, select output eight as the out signal. So now we should have a signal from our main left and right output. There you go, you can see it. I gotta turn that volume down. Hey, this is the recording of the X32 output. So now we have assigned what source that we're gonna be sending to each of these outputs. To send a signal to any of the mix bus outputs, click sends on faders. Now, when I select the mix bus one through eight page, I'll push select on the first mix bus one. Now the console is mixing mix bus one, so I can go ahead and move the XLR cable from output eight to output one. And now when we turn up the volume, we can hear the audio through the console. Hello, anyone there? And there we go. We have output from the console coming from Mixbus one. So, so far in this video, we set up a microphone. We routed our local inputs one through eight to be the source for channels one through eight on the routing inputs tab. We learned about user inputs, assigning them to input banks, and then routing individual inputs to the desired channels. 
Then we set up outputs from the console and looked at how to go about routing them. The best way to learn is to get your hands on the hardware and practice this routing. Be sure to save your scene first, but rewatch any part of this video a few times to really understand what you're doing and how it works. So in the next video, we're gonna be connecting our first stage box and begin routing over the AES50 digital audio network. Links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna help you and your church get better at production. So please consider subscribing to my channel, like this video, and turn on the bell to be notified about upcoming videos. Remember to grab the X32 routing master file, as well as look into my personalized training options at crazyamazingdesigns.com. I hope this video has helped you understand X32 routing just a little bit better. See you in the next one and have a wonderful day.